Let me pitch you a script idea. It's a fish out of water. But it's an alien out of the sky. Are the residents of this town doomed? Has the Resident Alien TV show been canceled or renewed for a second season on sci-fi? We've got you covered with everything you need to know so far about Resident Alien season one and two. But before we get into this video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel with notifications on so you don't miss any of the new videos we post. But first, let's discuss and catch up on the past season. Spoiler alert, the new sci-fi dramedy Resident Alien seems like it ought to be a very simple show, perhaps in a good way. The title is, of course, a play on legal terminology referring to lawfully registered immigrants residing in the country. Make that alien a literal extraterrestrial, and you have a really clean premise for a show, one that isn't exactly revolutionary. From Roswell to V to Alien Nation to ALF to the neighbors, the alien as immigrant allergy is familiar and resilient stuff. Why then does Resident Alien make it look so darn complicated? Even with Peter Hogan and Steve Parkhouse's Dark Horse comic as source material, the TV incarnation of Resident Alien struggles to find a consistent tone, layers in more artificial storytelling obstacles than the premise requires, and only occasionally figures out how to use its appealing cast. There were at least two or three points where I scribbled in my notes, wait, that's the show? And find myself sucked in to Resident Alien, only to have the series lurch off in a different direction. Alan Tudyk plays an alien explorer with a very particular and nefarious mission on Earth. He crashes his spacecraft, loses the device associated with his evil purpose, and finds himself in a remote Colorado town where he's able to occupy a doctor with the consistently amusing name of Dr. Harry Vanderspiegel. Harry isn't actually a doctor in town. He's just a completely random doctor who owns a house on a lake. But when the actual local doctor is found dead, Harry is drafted into a temporary position, treating everyone on the town's very conditions, both physical and psychological. It makes limited sense, but as alien Harry, who learned English from Law & Order reruns, puts it, the town doctor was murdered. Now, I am the town doctor because I am alive. That ought to be all of the complications that the show requires. There was a stretch between the third and fourth episodes in which it felt like Resident Alien was settling into a rhythm as, basically, Northern Exposure if Joel were an alien instead of Jewish. The community of Patience, Colorado, is full of likable residents including Asta 12 Trees, played by Sarah Tomko, a Native American nurse who worked for the old doctor and local bartender, and former Olympic skiing hopeful Darcy, played by Alice Wetterlund. Not everybody in Patience is interesting. The local mayor, played by Levi Filer, and his wife, played by Meredith Garriston, are a bore, but they have a son, Judah Prenz Max, who is the only person in town able to see the illusion of the alien's hairy-shaped flesh suit. You could make an entire show about alien and Harry trying to pass himself off as human. He searches the mountains for the device that will allow him to eradicate humanity as, all the while, Max attempts to expose his true identity. Easy, but Resident Alien lacks confidence in that potential. There's the mystery of the original Doctor's death, which I didn't manage to care about for a single second, though Corey Reynolds and Elizabeth Bowen occasionally garner chuckles as the town's strict, pug-loving sheriff and his generally overlooked deputy. Then, there are two bland characters trying to track down the alien. They're in multiple episodes, and I guess they're with the military in some way, but only one of them even has a name so far as I know, and neither has a personality. All of these elements, plus the arrival of another thinly introduced drama-inciting character in the fourth episode, give Resident Evil at least three or four seasons worth of plot, unspooling with limited momentum over less than one season, each requiring a different kind of pacing and sensibility, and none really presents well. The infuriating thing is that I would watch Tudyuk play this part and basically nothing else would even be required. The astonishingly versatile comic character actor could, in a different reality, have a borderline Jim Carrey type career and this is possibly the meatiest, most central TV role he's ever had. Playing a character who's struggling to master a language, the mechanics of a new body, and the myriad nice ties of human interaction, Tudyk is having a field day. What he's doing is indeed so creative 
creative that it's disappointing when series adapter Chris Sheridan can't think of anything better for him than fundamentally icky and unfunny gags like Alien Harry performs a pelvic exam on the town trollop. Tuttock's performance is carefully calibrated and generally improves on the material that surrounds it. Plus, it's a studied contrast to the actors he's teamed best with. Tomko and Wetterlund are both quieter and more natural, with the former contributing the show's emotional undercurrent, especially in scenes with Gary Farmer as Asta's father, and the latter delivering more organic ribald humor. Together, Tomko and Wetterlund are a good duo, and there are long stretches where they seem to be off on their own show. Also generating some humor with Tuttick are Pren and especially Gracelyn Awad Rink, who really elevates that storyline as Sahar, a Muslim girl whose own outsider statue helps her believe Max's claim about Alien Harry. The character of Sahar, whose hijab goes unremarked upon, is one of several places Resident Alien shows a beyond expectations level of nuance. Tomko and Farmer's characters are peppered with a few Native American details that I appreciated in their sort of specifically and in how they continue in recent hot streak for snotty nose res kids on TV soundtracks. See the CW's trickster. Again, in the northern exposure with an alien version of this show, Alien Harry could spend years meeting quirky patient residents and experience enhanced understanding of humanity, getting in the way of his plans to decimate the planet. I can't rule out that you'll be interested in the investigation into the murder of a character we never saw alive, or the two basically unnamed feds and one big name guest star looking for the alien, or the needless jumbling of the timeline, throwing in sometimes two or three different flashbacks per episode with minimal returns. I'm all for Tuttick getting a star vehicle at any time, but what an outstanding cast. Dr. Vanderspiegel's bumbling and sometimes menacing inability to accurately masquerade as a human is most notable in his interactions with the rest of the characters. But while the townspeople are often exchanging weird glances about his general oddness, his bluntness and honesty are endearing to many around him, even leading to a few odd romantic escapades. In addition to Tuttock, the rest of the cast really delivers and helps to mold the story and create a narrative that is truly unique to the series. For example, actor Sarah Tomko plays Asta Twelve Trees, a nurse of Native American heritage who, together with her family, helps to show Dr. Van Spiegel why humans gather and what they really mean to one another. I am so honored to be able to play this role, especially because of my Native American heritage. What I am most excited about, however, is the fact that I have Native American heritage, but I don't belong to any specific tribe. I'm still trying to figure out where I fit in personally, and I feel like that is a huge theme in relation to how Asta feels, she said, adding that because she, Asta, was adopted and is dealing with personal grief, Asta Twelve Trees struggles with feeling like she fits in. I think it's really beautiful to be able to portray a character who has a family surrounding her that says that she belongs, yet she herself feels internally confused and isolated, Tomko said. So when she meets Harry, it's such a relatable storyline, and I think it's really beautiful to kind of be a symbol of other, which is something that I feel very closely to, and so does Harry. The show does what I have personally never really seen before. The series portrayed a Native American family and community without centering around stereotypes and tropes. The series shows what it's like to live on or off the reservation today. Showrunner Chris Sheridan really made it a really important part of this show to get Native writers, artists, musicians, and actors so that we could really fill out the Native American community with what is true to this day, Tomk said. The show works to honor where modern Native American people actually feel fit in and how we belong and whose land this really is, and then showcasing that and showing what it's like for someone who's in that community, raised by that community, to maybe feel like she doesn't know where she fits in, and that just feels really relatable for me and for Asta. Tomko added, could we handle an alien invasion? Now, while watching a show like Resident Alien, it's fun to think what would happen if there were a humanoid alien walking around on our planet's surface. Could we handle it? How could humanity realistically respond? Tuttick was asked, and he said, I think that there's aliens here. The tardigrade is an alien. That seems like an alien to me. It's already here. Disclaimer, there is no evidence to support that tardigrades are aliens. I think, like most humans, I'm interested in some contact. I think it's time. We're ready. However, in thinking about it a lot more, Tuttick changed his tone. I guess we can't even handle each other, he said. But still, maybe it would bring us together as a race, he said. For example, he said if aliens landed on Earth and tried to kill all humans, we could 
as a species, join forces to attack aliens, Tuttick said. People seem to be very gung-ho on war. We could do that. That would be a way that we could come together, he said with a laugh. Will sci-fi cancel or renew Resident Alien for season two? The cable channel has far fewer original series these days, so it's hard to judge what a show's chances of survival are. That being said, I think this comedy will be renewed. And that wraps up the video. Thanks for watching.